Hello, welcome to my channel. The main rule for the quilting is that there are no rules. You will learn, you will uh, watch others and you will find the methods and ways of quilting that works for you. And that's the most important thing because you need to find uh, what works for you to be able to enjoy the process. What you will see is my process of working with different materials and uh, different designs. And I hope some of those tips and tricks will help you in your own journey. So today I am working with crumbs. The, the plan is to make some crumb blocks and to put them into um, one surface which I can use to make a, a laundry hamper. So having a basket in the bathroom, I want to have something to hang on the back of the door to save some space. So there are different methods of how to tackle the cramp quilting. Now first, if it was a bl the cramp quilt block I would want to use for the quilt, I would have them all color coordinated rather than mixed up. For the laundry hamper, I thought, let's go crazy and just mix up anything and everything I've got. So those are different things here. Now, again, different methods to start crumb quilting. Um, my method is I go with the smaller pieces first and then I will take it off from the sewing machine. So when I've got two of them, I will not be ironing yet. I will just open up, try to flatten it up and then I will chain piece as many small pieces as, as I can find, as I'm happy with. And then on the second pass, where they're coming back to me, I will put some strings and then I, I will put as many of those as I can on one string and there will be sm you know short string long string strings whatever I can find this is quite long so I would have a quite a lot of chunks put in together then I will again bring them back from the machine cut them and that will be the first point when I will do any ironing so here I've got a pile of those where I've already kind of went once or twice to the machine and as they're coming out now from the ironing and I did it two or three passes individually f from with the strings I will now try to match them up more or less here we go so those are two cramp, uh, cramps sewn together in a few places already so I'll try to match them up with at least one side to have the same length again I, I have not been um, using any rotary cutting to make them straight I literally just snip them uh, with the scissor as, uh, as I was t taking them off from the ironing just to more or less uh, straighten up one of the edges they don't have to be perfect at that point of time so whatever works this is another one more or less matched up with the length if it stick out somewhere I would uh, try to, if it's a shorter piece here I'll put it shorter to much more and then the top one will be cut a little bit to straighten up later so I'll crack on with my crumbs and then the next step will be to measure what I need to create the laundry bag um, and f for the front I will use the crumbs, for the back I will just use the plain fabric, there's no need to put the crumbs there uh, but that I will show you the, how I measure it and, and how, how I finish it off so I will go through my pile now, I, t I think once I sew this all together and make the blocks and put it together I think I should have enough uh, for the amount I need for the laundry bag so I would just like to go quickly through the um, trimming process for the crumb blocks so I'm using very small uh, cutting mat, it's quite useful uh, if you don't have a rotating mat and then I've got my uh, six and a half inch uh, square ruler I'm using because that's how I want the squares to be um, cut now um, I'm just going around the design to see where I want the cut to be and I don't want to finish on the uh, seams too much because it will be difficult later to sew over it so okay and then I'm just holding tightly the ruler to the fabric 
and I'm turning around the whole mat. Those bits here, you could think to use it um, to put on another block, and in some cases it is possible. But if you're putting too many of those in one block, you'll find yourself having lots of seams in one block, and, and it will be very difficult later to uh, cool through. So what I do instead, I keep all of those for my string blocks, because every now and then between the normal piece of fabric I'll put this one wherever it fits in the uh, on the size of the block and that adds nice interest but it doesn't add too many um, seams in one block also before I um, cut those whenever I get to the size that it's ready to be uh, squared up I do use a starch because that ho you can see that that fabric now is not so flimsy so it's much easier to one square it and to with all of those amount of seams you have in one block keeps it nice and tight for you to to put it together later so again I'm just putting it in just you know glide around see see which side which kind of um, colors or patterns looking the best and you know you don't, you don't have to be s straight on it. You can go wonky as well, whatever, um, whatever look you go after. So I think I go with this one. So we'll just go here first because that gives me a nice big piece, and that one I probably will use in another block if I still got some to do. Here you go. One more. This is a bigger one again. You, on this one, I probably got uh, leftovers from one or two blocks already, so there's a quite a lot of uh, seams here. So I just need to be careful when I'm putting my ruler, finding for the spot to cut this, that I don't have a seam just under the cutting line okay this will be fine so just turn it around to make it easier for the first cut so this is nice and big piece yes this definitely I can use for another block I would probably just instead of using one of those to add to the edge I would probably just use a, a string maybe on one side and another side depends what I can find in my uh, scrap box So just reposition this this one this ruler I'm using now I don't have any sticky bits under the grip ones I've got them on all the other rulers except of this one this is the newest one I have so what I just did I've put I've had some as uh, the tape which got that uh, like a it's not flat one it's got like a bumps on it I've put it under so it does help a little bit but not as much as I would have the original stickers to go back on the ruler something like this not sure you can see it very well on the camera but uh, with this ruler came those round stickers to put on the back and that holds um, to the fabric very very well so I might actually look for it on the Amazon or eBay just to see if I can buy some to put on the other rulers Okay, I will carry on squaring up and um, because I already made quite a few of those blocks I think I probably got enough uh, for the amount I need for the bag so I will now measure the back of the door see how big a uh, surface I need cut some calico cotton to quilt it on I'm not putting any batting in it and on the back of the bag it's going to be some some um, thicker fabric like um, curtain one or something like that you might have a leftover or you might have uh, old curtain you would like to use for it as well so I will now uh, measure what I need and uh, sort out those squares to make it in one big piece all right so it's time to do some math uh, for the bag so so the place I've got uh, on the door is 24 inches wide and 28 inches long 
So that's how I need to cut plus some uh, seam allowances all around. That's how I need to cut the back of the ba of the bag. Now for the front, because I want to box it up and I also want the flap, I need to do two different things. So the flap I want to be about four inches. So the flap will be four inches by twenty four inches. Now the bottom of the bag would have been 24 and I wanted to go under about two, 2 inches so 26 by 24 but I want to box it up I would like to have at least 4 inches extra so I'm just draw it first and then I can calculate how much fabric I actually need so that would be that 4 inches extra 4 inches extra and 4 inches extra here for the for the bottom of the bag so what I need is 24 and 8 which is 32 and then I would need 26 and the extra 4 so I need 30 inches here yeah. plus the bit for the flap as well so uh, what I need is a piece of fabric or piece of quilted fabric which will give me that 32 by 30 and then 24 by 4 so all in all I need probably a little bit more than that because I also need to add a seam allowance so if I do piece of 30 by 36 quilted and get it ready I will be able to cut um, those two pieces out of that quilted um, part this is going to be just flat normal fabric uh, also what I will need on the top of the bag I would like to have a handle so I can easily take it to the um, washing machine when it's full I will need two loops here to hang it and I also will put some um, elastic at the bottom so I can put a hooks here to kind of hold it to the door I don't want to flap it around when you're opening the door so not, not big loops like this, obviously it will be smaller ones but they, they will help to keep it flat on the door but that's the idea with how it goes <laughs> so my uh, squares are six and a half inches which is six inches um, when they uh, sewn together so I will need five to have the width and I will need six so I need 30 squares to finish that surface so I've got 29 I just need to make one more and I'm ready to put it um, together the piece of fabric I need for the back so I've sewn all the crumb blocks together and I cut out the shapes as per my um, design and I will now um, sew it all together now the flap, the bottom part of the flap, the one which will be visible and um, the top edge of the main bag is going to be finished off with bias tape so I don't have to turn anything there so that will help uh, with the bulk and also it I, would, I think it will look uh, much nicer and then the rest will be just sewn uh, from the left side and um, zigzag the edge okay so before I start stitching the back together I need to first do um, two things one I would finish off the edge of the back that's the edge I will finish this edge of the back with the bias tape 
and now we finish one of the edges of the flap of the bias tape so I don't then need to have to turn up anywhere so that will you know that will make less bulk here so that's the one thing and second thing I need to do is to prepare some loops which will be used for um, to hang it so I've got some um, um, I've got some leftover strip of the a binding which I can use for it so I'll probably go inside with the edges and then that will that will go on the edges and then I just need a little bit of elastic to put at the at the bottom as a small loops to hook it so it doesn't flap when you open the door so let me let me go a bit and then I will show you how it looks when it's done okay so I finished off the top edge both of those pieces so I will now box up the bottom of the bag and then use some uh, zigzag stitch to finish it off. Okay, so let's see how it looks so far. One corner second corner okay happy with that so somewhere here I will need to have that elastic uh, to pop up so it doesn't have to be big loop it will also uh, spring a little bit so I think what is it four inches so it's eight inches each Let's have a second one. Okay, so I will sew it now. <coughs> Here it will kind of the, the edge will um, hide later in the other seam, but at least I know it's in already. So yeah, that's about that. Let's see how far from the edge I've got it. Uh, let's make it an inch. And I'm using zigzag stitch here to hold it so it will hold better than just straight stitch and I don't have to go back and forth. So that the uh, loop's done. Now let's have a look what we need to do for the top. So I did think that uh, what I will do, I will just um, sew something like that when I finish. So this will kind of open more. But then I'm just thinking maybe if I just add some. Uh, elastic on in, inside that will kind of gather it nicely for me and also it will be easier to open when I want to put something in so let's try that so I will use the same elastic but I will sew it from the inside and po possibly not just by the edge maybe a little bit lower like that I would like possibly for it to stretch to about this length when I finish. Yeah, probably not more than the cover. Slightly less maybe. Oh, let's have a look. This side. Okay. So I will start from this edge, so I will pin it, so I will pin it on this side and on this side. Stretch it and pin it in the middle as well, this way is a little bit too low. That's 
my middle here. I'll just make some marks so it, it's going to be easier to pin it. And half of my tape is here. That's the middle of my tape and then I'll just I'll just pull it as I go along for the rest. So I will use the zigzag stitch on this one as well, just a bit wider. Okay, let's look how it came out. Yeah, pretty good. That should be alright. Because we obviously want to have some opening here. You don't want to op pull it every time uh, you want to drop something in. But also you don't want to be open too much. So um, that should be alright. So now I need to make loops. Double it up, I will sew it again on one side and then I can cut it into two loops. So I will also stitch it now. So I know they are there. next to each other so let's see let's get some pins in here so let's start two inches from the edge and then two inches from this edge So I've measured two inches from the edge and now I'm pinning the loops. So that's one side, that's the second side. And let's bring this closer because I do want them to actually end up more even than not. So let's pin the first one. second one even I don't have a hook yet, yet on the door so there's going to be a little bit on unevenness on this I can always make sure the hooks are positioned better <laughs> you know you have to kind of manage what you've got okay so let me just stitch it well here and I will use, I don't know if you have it on your machine, but on mine, I have like a reinforced straight stitch. It just kind of makes three um, stitches next to each other. So, because, you know, it, it will take some weight. I need to make sure it holds very well. Okay, so I've sewn both of the hooks using that reinforced stitch. This is how it will look when it's finished on both sides. Uh, I've sewn on the elastic at the bottom, so now I'm ready to um, pin it to the back side of the bag and sew it all together and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so I've sewn around all of the bag. In the last minute I, I Remember that I need to also put the handle into it, so I did the same way as I did with the um, those hooks to hang it. It's just I've spaced it out a little bit more, and I've used up some of the bit I cut out from the original 
fabric I had to make. So um, I used the reinforced stitch. If you don't have it, you may just um, go around twice with normal stitch, and then I finished off with the zigzags on the end, so it doesn't fray after washing. So let's put some of that. So let's turn it around and see how it looks. back okay let me hang it somewhere so you can see better what it looks like okay let me hang it and show you how it looks okay so overall look back look good is what I needed uh, those um, those elastic the, the bottom are uh, working well, but what I don't like actually is how wide that bit here is. So I think what I will do, I will just slightly stitch here, maybe like um, three inches here and three inches here, so it doesn't gape so much out. And then I think that that place will be big enough to throw the things in. It will open like a bag but it's not going to be as wide here so probably whatever the distance is here two three inches on both of the sides so let me do that and I will show you how it looks alright I think now it looks much better it's, the, it's not gaping out so much here obviously it will be hanging on the hooks there's a big enough um, hole here to put anything you want because that elastic will, will work there as well it's boxed up so you can put quite a lot and here we go, one scrappy laundry bag to hang on the door ready. I will show you a picture how it looks on the back of my door uh, when I install it as well, so you can see it at the end of this video. It looks very nice and to be fair, you probably could hang it on some other doors as well to to put some stuff in. Uh, I'm working from a conservatory, so I might actually hang it on the inside of the door of the conservatory to put things like um, some leftover fabric so you know because I'm sharing my space with kids I might put some for their kids toys so you may find other uses for this bag and obviously you the, the measurement you need to fit in what whatever space you've got but um, I think the process was quite uh, simple so you could make it in any size and also any shape really to whatever you need okay so Welcome to my bathroom and uh, the bag is now hanging on the door. Uh, now just as a warning and a tip, if you're asking somebody else to hang it for you, make sure you give the proper instructions where you want to have it hanged. I have not done that, so my bag is not stretched at the top the way it's supposed to. But um, I will leave it for now. Um, it does work, so that's the most important thing. In the process I've added elastic at the bottom of the bag to avoid from uh, wobbling it when you open the door but actually bag is quite uh, sturdy and heavy enough for it not to happen so I actually didn't use it so just make your judgment whether you want to add it or not when you're sewing it together so uh, my bathroom is quite small so I cannot go far enough to to properly video it but um, I hope it, you, you see how it looks. So that saved me a lot of space in my um, small bathroom where uh, the, the bucket, previously hung bucket, was taking quite a lot of space in the corner. Now um, that's not there anymore. So there it is, one laundry bag on the door.